You're listening to the Mindset Advantage Podcast with Elliot Rowe and Dr. Tricia Gardner. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking to Joshua Hosel, also known as J Dog or Slayer Fan, um, for people who've seen his threads on 2 Plus 2. He'll be talking about making 880 VPPs over the WCOOP this year, having a very popular um, goals thread on 2 Plus 2 online, and um, the things he's done to enable himself to play that sort of volume. So, Trisha, what do you have for us this week? Hey, I got something just slightly different. There's a little book, and literally, it's a little book. It's called The Little Book of Talent, 52 Tips for Improving Your Skills by a guy named Daniel Coyle. And he also wrote a book called The Talent Code, which is much more dense, uh, which I actually referenced quite a few times in uh, Positive Poker. But this little book, what he does with uh, the tips is he basically gives you tips for how to improve really quickly. So I just thought I would go over one of the tips, which goes along with some of the things that we like to talk about. And it's specific to, of course, improving your poker game. And the tip is you should, if you have limited time on to do your practice, choose five minutes a day over an hour a day, because when you're doing deep practice, a small daily practice like habit, and he even calls it a daily practice snack, is going to be a lot more effective than if you just try and cram it all in like one day out of the week. And that has to do a lot with the way the brain consolidates new knowledge and the way learning happens. So if you are short on time, definitely you want to practice short bursts, but daily. And even if you're not short on time, you should still be practicing every day, whether that's going over your hand histories or doing the card runners EV models or whatever the case may be. Uh, There's a famous music education guy named, I think you say his name, Shinichi Suzuki. I know for sure his last name is Suzuki. He said, only practice on the days you eat. So (laughs) that kind of tells you what you need to do. (laughs) Excellent. And that certainly makes sense in terms of, yeah, not just going for the, uh, the binge study one day a week, certainly building it up makes a lot more sense there. Okay. So let's give Joshua a call. So Josh, thanks for coming on the show. If you could introduce yourself to our listeners. Hey, thanks for having me on. For those who don't know me, my name is Joshua Hosel, and I post on 2 Plus 2 as JDog91 and play on PokerStars as Slayer V1 fan. I play mostly mid to high stake 6 Max Hyper Turbo games, the uh, Satellites, and the Cash Hyper games. And I've uh, got about 7 million VPPs lifetime or something around that. And yeah, so I dabble in tournaments, dabble in cash but mostly stick, stick my sudden go grind. And obviously this year, the W Coop, it's been pretty publicized online. You managed to get 880,000 VPPs over W Coop, which is an extremely high number. If you could just talk about what that was like as a process and how you felt playing through that month. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that was by far the largest number of VPPs I've put up in an entire month before. I think before that, in January 2013, I got, or January 2014, I got about 400,000. So I got more than double my previous best. And uh, yeah, so it was definitely a grueling, grueling grind. But uh, the games, like like the high set games, just don't run very consistently anymore outside of the Coop series. So I just decided that this year I really, really, really wanted to go hard. I wanted to prepare for the series. Like I was getting like massages regularly before the series started, got like massages during the series. We actually have an amazing massage therapist who like lives like right in town and she like, works with a ton of poker players. And like, she like knows uh, like, you know, just different stress points in our body. And just like for me personally, like I have a messed up like arch in my foot. My father has the same thing. So like when I'm grinding and I'm either, and I have a sit stand desk, but like, when you're playing 15 hours every single day, whether you're sitting or standing, like it's just going to take a toll on your, you know, on your legs or on your back. I mean, just like, yeah, so I was just did everything in my power to uh, be able to play as close to, uh, you know, like optimally all the time, every single day. But yeah, I think I played about probably 400 hours in September and like almost all of them were during the, the W Coop series itself. It was, uh, I'm actually going to pull up my graph right now as I'm talking I had something like a 80k upswing, then a 160k downswing during the month itself. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I was up at game 5,000. I was up $88,000. At game around 15,000, I was down $72,000. This is pre-rake back. And then by the end of the month, I was up 30,000 post-rake back and 
you know, clearing that many VPPs, I made well over a hundred thousand dollars in rake back during the month. So yeah, it's just like crazy. It's just crazy. And uh, for me personally, it's just like you have to take each day as a an entirely new challenge. Like I think a lot of guys get caught up in like results, and for the most part, I just don't pay attention to them. Like I actually didn't even look. I'm someone who usually stresses about their their EV line, but when it comes down to it, you can't control it that much. Like in the short term, so like there's no point to add the extra stress on myself. So I actually just didn't check it for like the entire month for the most part. But yeah, it was like a it was a great month. I'll uh, quit rambling. You can ask specific questions you have about it or anything like that. <laughs> So uh, I want to ask, so you did a lot of physical preparation in terms of the massages and stuff, but did you do any mental preparation specifically? Not really. Like I have, uh, I have Elliot's like uh, warm up tapes and I use them probably a couple of times a week on average. And I use them. I did use them every week during the WQ series. Uh, But for the most part now, like for me personally, it was more, on the physical side like i i've been like trying to get to the gym more often like i've been like losing some weight this this year i I have a long way to go still but i was just trying to make sure that my body was like fully prepared or like you know in the most optimal condition it could be in for the grind and then i also like tried to make sure i still got to the gym like either before sessions or after sessions like a few different times per week um i felt like especially like if i had a bad day and was like like, oh, I just, like, want to go lift and just, you know, get some release. Like, I would just go do that. But, yeah, for the most part, it's, like, the physical, on the physical side of things. And especially, like, one of my, one of my leaks is uh, I like to just, like, go have a beer um, after I'm, like, done playing for the day. But, like, the games would run so late. Like, I'm usually done playing for the day by 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. But the games would run until 9 or 10. And then I would still want to go out for a drink. And then all of a sudden, you know, it would be, like, 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. when I get home. This happened, like, in the past like during uh, like the scoop series. It's like, I really tried to like cut back and like be more focused and more attentive and just realizing that you have 20, like I think think the series is 21 days. Like you have 21 days, make the most of these 21 days. And then, you know, the rest of the year you can go do whatever you want for the most part. Right. And it sounds like a pretty decent amount of planning. And and from the, the mindset side, I know you said there wasn't a lot of mental preparation, but with the massages, do you find that's a big stress reliever for you? Because I know when I, I, I go probably once every two weeks for a massage, and I definitely find that it does help clear my mind, even though it is a, a physical thing. Yeah, definitely. Anytime like Shane is here, like I just feel... I don't know if it's just like, yeah, so she, whether it's the massage itself or like when she's just like talking to me or like, I'll ask her like, what do you feel like in my legs or whatever? Just like it all, it all definitely helps. I mean, I always feel like a brand new person when she's done, that's for sure. And yeah, so yeah, yeah, like, uh, I think I got one on a Saturday night. Oh yeah. I, got, I hit her up like on a Saturday night. I was like, I really need a massage for this massive Sunday grind. Can you please, please, please come over? And I'm I'm so glad I did because actually I think I had one of my best days of the entire series the uh, the very next day. I mean, I feel like that definitely partially was due to getting a massage and just like feeling feeling absolutely like 100% going into that Sunday. You know, you mentioned also besides you had this plan to just really go hard for the 21 days, but you mentioned that you're losing weight also. Do you have like a certain type of goal setting process that you use to achieve these big goals? Honestly, not really. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very different compared to most people. Like if I set short-term goals, like I, uh, that's what I have to do is set short-term goals. Like if I try to set some long-term goal, I end up getting, you know, off track or I change my mind or whatever might happen. So I try to just for the most part, or I, this year at least, I've been trying to just take it like week by week and then even, you know, sometimes day by day. I feel like for me personally, that's the best way to go about it. So I offer like free rolls like on my uh, like on two plus two and on uh, tilt book, a lot of times it's like, you know, I need to go to the gym five times this week or, you know, no, no drinking unless I'm like in this situation or whatever it might be. I mean, that definitely helps me. And even though I just lost one of my two free rolls last week and had to pay out $250, but that's besides the point. Uh, <laughs> so can't, can't win them all. Can't win them all. But the free rolls definitely like I sometimes relate them to the grind as well. Like, you know, need to grind X amount of hours or play X amount of games and like without a doubt, like I've grinded like probably over the years, like 300 hours that I would not normally have played. And that obviously given like my hourly rate playing Syngos, it adds up over time to where it's well worth it for me. 
And, and it was one of the questions I was going to ask is you have got one of the more entertaining blogs on 2 plus 2 or, or, or challenge threads. Um, does that create a level of pressure? I've had some other people tell me that it creates pressure if they're going to have to put up a bad graph or talk about a difficult time. Do you find that or are you quite happy to share your experiences and it's, it's not adding that extra level of pressure onto you? No, I don't really feel the pressure. I mean, for those who like read my PG and C threads, like I'm pretty open with not only poker, but what goes on in my real life. And say to me, like, I don't really ever feel pressure in any situation, like online playing poker or in person doing whatever. I'm pretty comfortable with myself and pretty comfortable saying what I think and whether it's right or, right or wrong, it doesn't matter. So, you know, it's my opinion. It's my two cents. So yeah, for me now, like I definitely, like I know people are like, oh, like, I hate, I hate when I have to make this post because like I look so dumb. It's like, who cares? Like, just like find motivation out of it. You know, if you don't want to post a bad graph and you don't think you played like a hundred percent optimally like the entire time, it's like just okay. Next time, like I focus on playing better. It's like there's always room for improvement. I think Patrick Leonard Pads was uh, talking in his his interview like about cutting down on distractions, and he is definitely one hundred percent right. I used to be terrible at talking, like talking on Skype or talking on Facebook while I was grinding. I'd be like 25 tabling six max hyper turbos, which for those of you who've never played them, like that's like very, very, very rapid action. And I'd be sitting there trying to like have three different conversations at the same time and it just doesn't work well. Like, it would cut so much into my EV. So yeah, I've just tried to like eliminate distractions. And since taking this stable job, I've been working with an MTT stable. Like that was a big challenge for me. Like I wanted to like get to people right away, but then uh, all of a sudden I'd be playing and I'd get messages and I'd have a hard time not immediately replying to them. But uh, it took me a little bit. And by the time like WQ rolled around, like I had a good system where I was like, okay, if you guys like need reloads, you need to hit me up between these hours. And so you'll always have money for the next day. If you have a question about whatever, I'll get to you at the end of my day. But like in this block of time, I'm just never going to respond. So like make sure if you have something that needs to be, get done, you need to tell me before. And it worked out really, it's, you know, it worked out really well. The guys all listened. They're all like helped me, which was great. But yeah, say in general, it's just like there's always room for improvement. So you just have to like, like look for different ways and improve and yeah, just do it. As Nike says, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you manage to maintain your focus over, because you're playing these long stretches and so many tables at a time. How do you manage that? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, and it's funny too, because, uh, so yeah, like during the coop series themselves, like I pretty much start, I, I was usually the first reg on or Scosset would sometimes beat me to the grind. And then we, I'd play straight through the entire day. Like I literally wouldn't take a break at all. So I'd be playing, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hours straight. And it's weird because like I, I used to have a ton of like problems with like playing long sessions. I think for me, this W cube series, I cut out a lot of the lower buy-ins and I mostly just like played like 181 to, uh, $1,700 games and then bigger when they were in the lobbies. So like that was part of my problem before is I played so many tables, like I'd be 20 or 25 tabling and it's just not possible for me anyway to play, you know, 15 straight hours when 25 tabling, but if it goes down to like where my average table counts like 10 and sometimes, you know, hitting like 16, 17, 18 for, you know, like 10, 15 minutes at a time, it's not so bad. And for me personally, like that just allowed me to play so many more hours I probably played better. Like I certainly made less mistakes. So I think for me personally, like it optimized not only my hourly, but probably, I mean, then definitely like my, uh, my overall expectation just because I put in so many more hours than I would have otherwise been able to. So yeah, like it's all like finding the right balance for yourself. For me, I mean, I've played, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of syngos I've played in the past three years, but probably, probably a quarter million syngos, I would say that's like a fair guess. And it's just, you know, a lot of trial and error and just have to find what's right for you and then stick to it and then work on improving off of that. And did it help for you that there was a backstop here? So it wasn't that you were saying, I'm going to be playing 15 hours a day this year. It was a case of this is a 21 day period. I've got myself in better shape. I'm having my massages. I'm preparing and just getting through those 21 days. Do you think that was a key? That was a factor here? Definitely. 100%. Because, uh, yeah, honestly, since WCOOP has been over, 
like the last two weeks, like I think I've played maybe like 12 hours total. Like this week I played the two hours before the Super Tuesday just because I play mostly the hyper satellite games. So I, I try to play the blocks right before the biggest MTTs of the week. So I played the two hours before the Super Tuesday and then I played the two hours before the 1K Thursday Thrill and that's that's been it. And like other other than that, like I've not even been really on my computer at all either. Like I've been uh, enjoying life and just like going out and doing a lot of stuff in TJ in, in Tijuana. Sorry, I live in Rosario Beach, Mexico. So like Tijuana is about 20 minutes away. So like I've been uh, like I went to the mall a couple times, actually like four times in the past week and just been enjoying a more normal life. And I plan on doing that for the rest of the year because for the most part, the uh, sit and goes, especially like the high stakes, the games get quite bad at the end of the year just because people are like poker players in general, like procrastinate a ton or are bad at planning. So a lot of guys are far behind Supernova Elite Pace. And then you have guys who are like, oh, instead of going, you know, for 1 million BPPs, I'm going to go for 1.5 million or 2 million for those, you know, extra bonuses. So for me personally, like I don't think the EV change is that much. So I just prefer for the most to like study and enjoy life for the past, you know, for the last two months of every single year. And then, uh, just some geared up and refreshed for the next year. Cause then like for me, for my games in January is the T cube, the turbo championship. So I'll have many long days, like right at the start of the year. So I gotta be ready for that. Um, but yeah, it's like for the most part, just been trying to enjoy life and, get back in the gym like i've been getting a bunch of massages because there's like yeah like there's still something like wrong in my right foot actually when i go home to the u.s i'm finally going to get some orthotics made and get some like some better shoes i'm hoping to be able to start playing tennis again and maybe to play like us poker players have a team in like the local basketball league so like, i'm hoping to be actually be able to play it's like yeah my problem is like my feet just like don't hold up with like a lot of running right now but hopefully that will change but yeah for the most part just like trying to enjoy life and for me personally like that was definitely like a huge motivation like okay you have 21 days and these 21 days you need to just leave it all out there and and, you know like these 21 days you're probably going to make you know like 33 percent or your ev is going to be like 33 percent of your entire year-to-date expectation so make the most of it (laughs) Yeah, that's that's just really great. You know, one thing that it kind of I'm picking up in what you're saying is that, you know, talent and expertise, there's no doubt is constructed over time. And so you've kind of got these processes, you know, down pat. But what did you do to get where you are today in poker? Um, honestly, yeah, so I've just tried to like surround myself with uh, a lot of great players, which is what that's always common. Uh, advice I I hear given by by good players, um, and it's just so true though. Like for me personally, like I wouldn't be where I'm at without my current coach and without my current backer Bert Stair. Like without them, I had other people that play my games that are like play the cash hypers. Like I play mostly the the satellite games now, but I used to play mostly the cash hypers, and I had guys telling me like, oh, wow, you went from being like one of the worst like high stake regs to like one of the better ones, or at least you're very, very tough to play against now compared to last year. So yeah, for me personally, it was like surrounding yourself with the right people and then just getting the study habits down. Like for me personally, like I didn't know how to use the post swap tools like Cardrunner's EV and now like there's other GTO solvers out there, which I'm actually just starting to get into. Because I'm actually starting to relearn the cash hyper games right now, and it's a, uh, it's fun. It's fun because it's like a, a challenge. Like the satellites are a much more simple game. It's mostly you know push push or fold games, like a pre flop game. So it's actually been fun, like doing some post flop analysis, and it's just funny because I'm like, oh wow, I'm away from these cash hyper turbo games for you know like a year, and now I feel I feel behind the curve again. But for me, it's like a it's more motivation. It's like, oh, I have motivation to actually focus on something. Like, let's get back with the curve and maybe get ahead of the curve and be ready to, you know, crush in 2016. Awesome. And then um, as you're thinking about, you know, those swings that you had in WQ, I mean, it really stood out for me what you said there, you know, starting 88,000 up, then dropping 150 and then coming back. A lot of players on that downswing would have freaked out. It would have sent them into a sta- tailspin. How do you think you're managing to deal with that variance much better than most? Well, I mean, it just comes with experience. Like, definitely, 
I have a lot more of like a DJ inside to me than most people do. And I think like to a certain degree it, it helps just because like there's many players who just simply wouldn't be able to, you know, sit there and fire seventeen hundred and thirty five hundred dollar sit and goes, especially like games as volatile as essentially push fold games because the variance is absurd and the games are offered twice per year to where like you can literally just run bad over the course of your entire career and there's nothing you can do about it but that's also why i've learned like in the past like i went from like having like a six-figure bankroll going into 2013 to being dead broke uh, having like debt and being in like 200k of makeup of my backers by the end uh, or by mid 2014. So like I went from being 21 years old and like, Oh, it's like sweet. Like, you know, I got six figures to my name. This is going well to just having beyond nothing. Um, and it was, it was tough. And then I got myself like addicted to Adderall. Actually I was taking Vivans, which is supposed to be slightly better, but you know, there's to be honest, like there's no reason to use those drugs. Like I, was all about it at first, but then what happened was I couldn't sleep very well, and so then I started taking Xanax, and Xanax like is quickly very addictive, and I went from taking a quarter of a bar a day, which is what I think 0.5 milligrams, to taking three to four milligrams per day, like one and a half to like two full bars, and it, was, it got bad, it got bad for a while. Like I don't think it really, it, it certainly wasn't good for my game. I don't think it negatively affected me as much as it would have some other people because I realized it. And so I would only play when I actually felt okay. But yeah, say for me, like the swings, the swings don't bother me as much. Um, I just, cause like, it's like kind of a been there, done that situation. Like during scoop, I think I had two different days where I lost between 80 and $90,000. And I don't think I had a single day where I won more than 50 gay. Like I was the big loser in the, uh, 3,500s this year. But yeah, I, uh, I know I'm, going back and forth on topics here but uh yeah it's just it's interesting i think it's like all what you're used to like i get bored now when i'm sitting here playing you know 100 mostly like 109 to 357 dollar hypersats just because you know i was just used to having 30 40 thousand dollar swings like every every single day just last month but i also then on the other side of the coin i try to think about it's like you can't think about it in that regard you like you need to just think about the ev that you're making or, you know, the hourly that you have playing, like you can't think about, oh, I'm only winning or losing X amount of dollars per day. Like that's a terrible way to approach it. It's just like the, you got to think about the overall EV and just putting in the hours. But, uh, but yeah, say, so I don't, like, I don't know why I handle swings better than most people do. I think it's just a combination of been there and done that. And also just having the, the DJ inside me. <laughs> bill of that gene and and with that it, do you notice other players at the table who really can't cope with that i'm not asking you to name names but is it something where you see you know well this guy had a bad day yesterday and then he'll turn up and just go crazy at the tables do you see that weakness in the bigger games you do in some people or like even in sessions like i can tell when uh, a couple of guys are like losing a lot or tilted just because the ranges all of a sudden get really really wide it's actually funny. It's like pretty important to like pay attention to these things or try to pay attention to these things. And in the, especially in the satellite games, like my ranges can change dramatically just based on it's like, oh, this guy's tilted right now. So like I can't jam as wide into him or I should not jam so wide in the button because he's going to call blind on blind, you know, 10 percent wider, whatever it might be. But yeah, you don't see it as much of the high stakes. And I feel like you don't see it as much in sit and goes in general. I feel like. I'm not sure why it is, but sit and go players, I feel like tend to just be more, you know, more robotic. It's just, you know, it's the same thing over and over again. It's interesting because like in MTTs, you can get away playing your C game more often and, you know, still be fine and still have like a nice edge in the field. But in MTTs, you can also misplay one hand so badly to where it's like, oh, wow, this, like, I'll never be in this spot again. You know, if you, like, say you misplay some spot, like... Final table bubble or something. Yeah, like, well, like, final, like, or, like the final table of the Sunday Million or something like that. It's like, oh, wow, like, I'm probably never going to final table the Sunday Million again, and I just played this hand tragically bad. Like, what did, I, what did I do? So it's, like, it's interesting because, like, you can't ever really make that big of a mistake in a sit and go. Like, even... So like we only got one seventeen thousand dollar hypersat off to the uh, the fifty one k super high roller event, but like 
even if I made some bad call, it couldn't actually be for like an absurd amount of money in terms of EV. Whereas in one tournament hand, you can just not necessarily break a career or make a career, but it, you know, it's just like much, much larger differences in terms of the EV based on, you know, if you play the hand well or not. So it's, just, it's, it's interesting. And I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure the difference. Cause I feel like MTT players in general, like they'll be playing more. They, they just like play like a, a lower quality of game more often. And so like, I guess, I guess like when you get in those spots, you just, like have to be able to like, to, you know, like, Oh wow, I'm in this spot. I need to make sure and not, not misplay any of these hands. Cause I'm in this, this huge spot right now. Whereas like sudden go guys, I feel like in general, like they're just more robotic and yeah, it's like nothing's, nothing's ever changing. So you've been around the poker world for a long time. You've learned a lot of important lessons. What do you think is the best piece of advice you could give someone who's maybe looking to get into the games today or looking to improve their game today? That's a good question. I always, I'm always bad at answering questions like that. I think if you're like a tournament player, game selection is like definitely huge because like there's there's seriously just people firing certain tournaments per day where they're just like, uh, like I'm just like looking at the fields, like you're not making money. You're not making money. You're not making money. Like you'd be better off playing, you know, whatever other tournament, uh, that's going right now. So like game selection is definitely huge. And then just staying, trying to like catch up to and stay ahead of the curve. Just like you have to put a lot, a lot of work into your game off the tables. But then the other thing is like, you need to be able to play that same quality, while you're playing i think i think patrick leonard also uh touched on that subject in terms of he's like oh i've seen some guys who they do a hand history review they sound like you know like they know what they're talking about like they they're playing really well they're analyzing spots very well but then i see them play in game and they they play like garbage um and like a lot a lot of that's you certainly right a lot of it's like table count related I, mean, I realized that myself that's why like this year i've cut back in my table count just to give me more time to like analyze even in like my push fold games because like that gives me like more time to like look at my charts like if the spot is kind of close like if i had 25 tables like i had no chance to like look at any charts and i like seriously have like 20 charts for the hyper satellite games like this just gives me more time to like make sure i'm like playing correctly or i can like look at someone's stats like more in depth in the spot whatever it might be i think given how tough the games have gotten I think all those little things, like thinking about the little things, really, really adds up in the long run. Excellent. I think that's perfect advice. And in terms of, you mentioned the stable. Um, If people are interested in talking to you or or joining the stable, how would they find you? I think we're going to be advertising on Tiltbook very soon. Like we should just, like there'll just be a post talking about the stable and what we're offering. And, uh, you know, if you want to apply, like reply here, email this email account whatever it might be. We haven't exactly planned it out because we we doubled the size of the stable from nine players to like 18-ish now just through word of mouth to where we actually didn't need to advertise. But I think now that WCOOP is over and things are slowing down, we plan on within the next like week or two to advertise. So yeah, just like keep your eyes peeled on Tiltbook. I'll probably post about it on 2 plus 2, like in my PG and C thread as well. And maybe on Facebook, although like that's got much, much, they, that gets much less attention than the other two. But yeah, so yeah, just keep your eyes peeled. Um, we uh, have a really good group of guys. It's mostly like mid sick empty tiers, a couple like high sick empty tiers. I'm a good, good coach who like plays on the stable. And then the owner of the stable plays nosebleed cash games for the most part. And he does some of the coaching and then the, uh, the other player does the rest of the coaching. But yeah, so you just keep your eyes peeled on Tilt Book. There should be, there should be something up, I would say, within the next two weeks. But who knows? <laughs> I, I tend to procrastinate a lot. <laughs> like I just talked about not procrastinating, but I do it myself as well. <laughs> so everyone should read your blog if they're interested in it. You get you more readers for that as well. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Okay, Josh. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and just talking about the W Coop and these things that players should should be you know thinking about when they play because it does make a huge difference. So, really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thank you no so problem. much. Yeah, say thanks for having me. I had a great time. Awesome. Cheers. Bye. 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 So that was great talking to Josh. It's amazing to hear just how much volume he managed to put in over W Coop. 
What's so crazy is not only that he puts in a huge amount of volume, but that he takes like these huge swings and it doesn't even really seem to get him down all that much, you know? He seemed pretty perky, didn't he? (laughs) He really did. (laughs) You know, I just thought it was pretty cool because a lot of people, as you well know, you know, they just get really freaked out on those down swings. But I guess, you know, he's been down at the bottom and been in so much makeup that he just has gotten mentally used to it, maybe. And it's reaching that stage of he truly sees the game in the long term rather than this daily thinking or even sort of monthly thinking. It's really about just putting in that quality volume and knowing that in the long term, um, you'll see the money come through. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing I thought was pretty cool is how he talked a lot about just setting up his day to day life in terms of, you know, not staying out too late if he knows he's going to play or getting his massages and really, you know, going after his uh, just kind of general well-being and health. Yeah, and that's definitely something that I think a lot of guys, after a few years of playing, start to realize the amount of value there is in having that sort of life balance and making sure you have those times where you can relax as well. What do you think about that idea of giving free rolls to keep yourself on track that he talked about? I think I think it works quite well. I know a lot of guys within stables will do that, um, sort of offer a free roll um, if they don't hit their volume target or exercise target. It seems to be pretty effective for most people um, to have some sort of financial incentive to hit their goals. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. And also, I just wanted to bring up, you know, I think for everybody listening, make sure that you're looking at your overall activities. Because if you go by the Pareto principle, that kind of says that 20% of your activities give you 80% of your results. And it looks like he's really kind of been able to narrow down on, you know, the small number of activities that give him the best results. Yeah. And I mean, it's certainly paid off over WCOOP for him. That's for sure. (laughs) That's for sure. Absolutely. So guys, thank you for listening to the show. And if you're interested in the show, um, please subscribe and it will get delivered to your phone every week. I will talk to you next week. Thanks guys. You've been listening to the Mindset Advantage podcast with Elliot Rowe and Dr. Tricia Gardner. To get any resources mentioned in the episode or to listen to past shows, visit pokermindcoach.com forward slash TMA podcast. Thanks for listening.